When you first open your refractometer, what you want to do is just double check that everything is inside. The box is well padded. So when you get your refractometer, that will be the refractometer, your polarizing filter, your refractive index liquid, and of course your power cord. And your refractometer comes with a cover that you're going to want to use anytime you're taking a reading. That cover needs to be closed. And then a focus, focus eyepiece. You can actually focus this to your eyes. And this is where the focus is. And then you can put your polarizing filter here. And you'll rotate that polarizing filter to get multiple readings. And then on the back, you've got your power source plug-in. You've got your power and your intensity. The white switch is the intensity of the light. You've got your RI liquid, your power cord, and you're ready to go. So that's going to be the beginning. Let's look at the procedure of using a refractometer. You're going to have your setup here and you're going to be putting your liquid and your stone onto the side of the stage here and not on the glass. You never want to put anything on the glass. But you can see the reading scale, which is what you're going to put your eye down on so you can read. And what we're going to do is take our RI liquid, shake it up a little bit. If your RI liquid has been sitting up for a while or perhaps been in a box for a while, you want to shake it just to make sure it's, it's back to a liquid form because the sulfur crystals will form out sometimes. You just want to put a drop on here. You don't want to put a lot. This is something that you have to be careful of because you don't want to get too much, but you got to have enough to have a good optical contact. And you slide that stone and then slide it over on the CZ hemicylinder. We have a CZ hemicylinder. They're harder and they're harder to scratch, but they still can be scratched. And you close the lid and make sure to always close that lid. And you'll be rotating the stones like this very carefully. When you take your multiple readings, you'll be rotating the stone and that's going to give you your multiple RI readings for the gemstone. So you can get a good refractive index reading on the stone or a set of readings is what you'll probably need. And then you'll push the stone to the side and then clean it off carefully. The RI liquid is toxic and so you want to be sure and get it off here. You want to use it in an open room where you've got a, a good air source coming through. Clean it off real good because if you don't, the sulfur crystals will crystallize out of the liquid. And then you close it back up and you're all set. And that's the basic procedure for using your refractometer. Once we have our gemstone in place, it will look something like this. You'll see a darker area, a lighter area, and then you'll have the line where these two come together. And you may have to rotate your stone a little bit. Be sure that you've got your cover and then take a reading here, which we've got roughly 1.54. And then what we're going to do is rotate the stone some. We're going to use that polarizing filter. But as we looked at it previously in this video, you rotate the stone some and you'll notice as you rotate it, that reading will change some. A little difficult to capture totally on a video camera. It'll, it, it looks a little bit different. It's the reason I use uh, some still shots in here. But you'll notice as we rotate this stone some, it goes from 1.54 up to about 1.545. And then from here, we're going to rotate it another 90 degrees. What you want to do is rotate the stone and take multiple readings because that's going to give you the full range of the refractive indices that you're going to be getting from a particular gemstone. So what we're going to do is rotate the stone one more time. And you'll notice that reading moves up to a 1.55. So as you rotate the stone, you have to write down the readings and take note of those readings to make sure that you understand the full range of the refractive indices of the stone, because that's going to be important for you to be able to make the identification. Of course, in this particular stone, we know 1.54 to 1.55 in this area. It's a purple stone. We're going to either have quartz or scapolite. We're going to talk about how to separate those later. But I will tell you that this is what it's going to look like once you get your gemstone on your refractometer stage and you get your RI liquid and you're taking your readings. This is what it will be looking like for you. And this is what you're looking for as it comes to the refractometer readings of your gemstone. 
I want to remind you that this is not a magic box. This is not something you just simply open it up, put the liquid on, put the stone on, take the reading. You have to practice at this because sometimes when you're looking through the eyepiece, as you saw there, I was having to do with the lens, you have to move your head back and forth some. You have to maybe move it up and down. The, the view that you will get through the eyepiece, as you saw, you can push and pull the eyepiece to get better focus for yourself. But you also have to move your head around. You have to look at it from different angles to be able to see the most clear reading of that line which is the refractive index. So this is something that takes practice. It's not something that you just put it on there and it just reads it for you. You have to practice at this and practice with gemstones and practice viewing them to be able to be the, the most efficient at getting a refractive index from your refractometer. So I wanted to mention that to you because it is important.